Hey folks, welcome back to Art of the City TV, live streaming here from Solana Beach, California in my beautiful art gallery. And I am in a particularly great mood because we've had so many people coming into the gallery this last weekend and the last few days. I mean, it is so refreshing to be in this space and have so many people come through. And the nice thing is people are just really feeling good. And I talk to them and they just say, my gosh, we really appreciate being out here and they are really appreciating the art. So it's just such a good place to be. And I hope that you folks too are venturing out in your cities and getting a little bit more freedom. Um, today, I have an amazing artist coming on the show. And this artist actually comes from a family of artists and he has such a unique style and what he's doing within art, it's really amazing. And his name is Matt Luna. He is coming live out of Las Vegas, not Las Vegas, Nevada, but Las Vegas, um, New Mexico. And one time when I was on my way to Santa Fe, I saw the sign that said Las Vegas and I thought, oh wow, Las Vegas is a lot closer. <laughs> and who I, the people I were with are like, Ruth Ann, um, yeah, no. This is a totally different Las Vegas. So we're gonna bring him on here in just a second, but I also wanted to mention our gallery hours are noon to five now, if you'd like to come by seven days a week. We are working very diligently on our website. So if you get a chance, go to the website. We do have an online store and we started something really unique since I think I had mentioned 25 years of being in business, we went through our 10,000 square foot warehouse and we're bringing in a lot of precious jewels of art that we don't carry anymore. So you're gonna benefit from that. You'll see some of those on our live website and we are actually gonna start an auction. We're gonna be giving part of the proceeds to various foundations, um, mainly for kids to learn about art. So take a look there. But let me see if I can get Matt on the show here. Hello, Matt. How are you? Hi. Good. How about yourself? Good. Welcome to the show here, Art of the City. So pleased to have you on. Awesome. So, Thank um, you so much for having me. We've got a, a lot of folks watching here today. So share a little bit about, you know, your background, where you come from, and your love for art, how that actually started. And, you know, like you were saying in your introduction, you know, about Little Las Vegas, New Mexico, you know, and it not being Nevada, and that's a huge, you know, uh, misconception when people are coming, you know, they see the Las Vegas and they think big lights, but actually <laughs> we're from a very small town, you know, 12,000 people, for about 14,000 people. So it's a, it's a, it's a tight knit community. Are there any yeah. casinos? Uh, no, <laughs> not, not yet. <laughs> uh, you got to go to Santa Fe or, or Albuquerque. For right. That yeah, so you Matt, how did you get, well, how did you get this passion for the arts? Um, and, you know, it kind of starts off, um, the middle of my story kind of starts when I was born uh, with this, you know, and, and the reason why I say that is because my bloodline goes so far back, you know, with the art. And, uh, you know, so when I was a, a child, you know, I was a very uh, um, textile, I, I like texture. And, and uh, my mom tells me a story, you know, even from as far as back as my memories, you know, of, of me grabbing roly polies, the, the insects, and putting sure. them in my mouth. And I'd let them crawl, crawl around in my mouth uh, just for the oh. feeling of it, you know, as a child. And, uh, and uh, poor thing, you know, she, she dealt with a lot with her middle son. <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, you know, I was growing up, um, I had an older brother and a younger sister. And my older brother uh, was, he used to sketch at a very young age and we shared a bunk bed and I would be on the top bunk and I'd hear him narrating his, his, his drawings, you know, and he, and he'd be drawing and talking about it. And I would almost get a picture in my head of what he was doing, you know, and then in the morning I would see it and it was amazing, you know? And so I kind of like wanted to follow in his footsteps with, with drawing and, and, uh, and stuff, you know, and, and, and I started making little, little things for my sister for her birthday and uh, just start off real small, you know, and then right. somehow 
<laughs> That's kind so of great. So you did you get involved in different mediums like drawing or painting before you went into this medium that you're using, which is so unique? Um, you know, not really. I, I, I don't really fancy myself as a, as a painter or, you know, a, a, a drawing. I can uh, copy, not trace, but I can copy pictures, you know, that I see, but I'm not really too good at, at, at actually doing it. I'm better with the 3D image. You know, so you uh, have more, your mind as an artist works more towards the three-dimensional sculptural aspect of art. Absolutely. You know, and, it, and like I said before, you know, it goes back further than that. You know, uh, uh, the bloodline that I was talking about, you know, with, with my father, you know, and how he would draw these little animals and, and he doesn't fancy himself much as an artist. You know, he, he's a... a a uh, creator of sorts, you know, he, he, he built his house. I watched his dad build his house, you know, and it's all adobe and, uh, and to see what he, you know, did and how strong he was, uh, kind of gave me that, that, that inspiration. That's amazing. So, and your dad is uh, Tewa, right? That's my, that's on my mother's side. It's on your mom's side. So, you know, you come from a really long lineage being there, in New Mexico, both Spaniard and native indigenous folks. And all of those people were in their own right artists with pottery and building and all these things. Were your parents influenced by that in their own creativity? Yeah, absolutely. You know, my, my, my dad comes from a, a family of seven uh, siblings and uh, the seven total and each one of them has uh it's it's a musical background so uh, uh you know my 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 uncles you know they all play uh, music so when we get together it's always a big you know a big celebration you know especially with the music and on my mom's side as well you know my, my uncle alex her oldest brother who's also a great musician you know and, and um of northern new mexico and so i'm very blessed to have kind of got the intersection of, of both of, the, of those bloodlines, you know, and, and, uh, and so, you know, it's, it's a blessing. That's so great. So you just come from this rich culture of art and music and creativity, and now you've taken all of those things. And let's talk about what you're doing now, because when I first saw your artwork, I've been watching you on Facebook. And I think you posted the other day, I was like, wow, we've got to have you on the show. So share with the folks kind of how you got to do what you're doing. And then let's talk about what you're actually doing. Okay. And, you know, like I said, you know, my, my upbringing, um, I, I come from a very patient, uh, a patient man. You know, my father and my mother are both uh, very patient people. And it kind of like, um, it was a learning experience, you know, for me as a child to kind of grasp onto that patience and they showed me you know and it takes a lot of patience to do this you know type right. of work and to sit there and 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 you know uh, you know the cans are so brittle sometimes when you actually lay it out uh they crack and they're just they're super sensitive you know and right. even from the beginning of the art piece you know the can has to be in in super good condition you know, which so isn't what fans, like how did this evolution start? Because what I'm particularly fascinated about your work is that you're taking something that most people would actually throw out. They'd say, ah, it's trash. Let's get rid of it. But you're seeing that as an opportunity to create something of beauty. Yeah. And, you know, it, it stems from I, I, I could see the artwork in a lot of things. You know, and and uh, and I'm kind of like a, I guess you could say like a hoarder of of, uh, <laughs> of trash stuff. But I appreciate the art on on boxes, you know, on on uh, um, just anything, you know, even the dog food bags. You know, I I, I love the artwork that's on them, and uh, so I just start saving these things for so, you know, and thinking about it as I'm going to do something with that. I want to. You know, and then um, the cans really stuck out to me because of the artwork on, on, on the cans, especially the local breweries. You know, right. they use the Dia symbol on a lot of the cans. 
and that's a uh, very symbolic here in, in in New Mexico, you know. So when I see those types of things, I'm probably the only person that walks into the store and can and can see when the can changes, you know, when they find a new logo or they do something like that. I, I what actually, is it symbolic of? You had mentioned something, and I kind of missed it. Um, you know the the Zia symbol, and I like to use it on a lot of my artwork. Um, I can flip the camera here, and what it is is it's our it's our it's on the state um, flag. Okay. What it is it's that the Zia symbol, and what it represents is uh, it's from the Zia Pueblo, and what it represents is the four uh, everything in fours. So okay. it's the, like the seasons, you know, uh, uh, spring, fall, summer, winter, uh, the time of the day, uh, new morning, noon, evening and night, um, even through growth, you know, childhood, youth, adolescent and, and adulthood, okay. you know, so, it, so it's a, it's a, and it's the sun. So that's what it symbolizes, you know, through birth, uh, it, the, the, Zia symbol was uh, very symbolic to the Zia Pueblo. So is, this is um, this comes from native tradition, then. Yes. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Now I get it. I did. I remember when I did go to New Mexico in Santa Fe. I did see that symbol quite a bit. I wasn't sure what it meant, but that's wonderful that you're sharing that with us. So you pull that off of these cans and. How did you tell us about like your first experience using this art form, create, you know, taking these cans, which are, you know, probably not worth anything and then reappropriating them in your art to create these wonderful works of art. You know, I, I just kind of, um, just kind of fell into it. You know, I have never had a schooling for art. You know, I, I, uh, it was just something that I just, I love the cans and, and really I have my first piece here um, and I'll show you in just a second okay. uh, that I just said, you know, I want to start doing something with the cans. I can't even tell you really how it materialized, you know, I, I, uh, just my love for recycling and, and the love for the art. And, you know, so I just, uh, it just kind of fell into it. That's so great. And I think too, probably, you know, as um, native people, we, a lot of our families, I don't know about yours, but, you know, a lot of our families really struggled financially. And I think as kids, we learned how to entertain ourselves with nothing because we didn't have anything. And there's something to be said about using your creativity, your mind in that way. And, you know, like I said earlier, you know, with my childhood and my brother, you know, we didn't have iPads and iPods, you know, so it, you kind of had to build that imagination, yes. you know, and, it, it, you know, it started off, you know, when we were just, when we were so young and, you know, my, my, my mom and dad were part of a, a foreign exchange program here in Las Vegas, New Mexico, uh, called the United World College. And what it is, is it's an international college for students. Okay. So Las Vegas, and there we're one of four, 14 in the world, um, and we're the only one in the United States. And it just so happens it's, it's right here in, in little Las Vegas, but it brings so much diversity to the town. You know, all That's these great. Students. So people from all over the world come to Las to, Vegas? Yes, and they go to this college and their students, it's, it's like a high school, college level um, classes, but you're able to um, host students so the ones that can't go back to their country for breaks and things like that, they stay with the families. So my, my mom and dad were part of that program. So I was exposed to a lot of different cultures as a, as a mm -hmm. child. And I do remember um, this gentleman, Stalin, who was an artist. And that's my earliest um, you know, uh, memory of, of, of being intrigued by art, you know, was seeing his, and I must've been maybe in fifth grade and uh, and he would do these um, wasp heads out of wasp heads. It was amazing. Oh wow! Yeah, and he would collect little wasp heads, and he made one. And I just thought that was amazing, you know. So uh, I just kind of remember that being my earliest uh, memory of wanting to do this, you know. And then with just the, you know, I got into recycling, and I've always done that, 
you know, I, I recycle my cardboard, you know, everything, uh, compost. Right. And, uh, and then I just started thinking, you know, I, I could turn this into something beautiful and, 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 and you uh, have, and it just kind of turned well, up. Why don't we start looking at some of your artwork and then you can kind of share a little bit about, you know, how you actually execute to create this artwork and then your inspiration. So I'm going to, I'm going to minimize my screen so everybody can see you um, a little bit better there. So that way we can see your artwork. And I'm going to flip the screen here. Okay. So here um, with the Dos Equis cans, uh, it's actually a three piece band. Um, so this is my bass player and he's made out of all Dos Equis cans. And I use a little bit of the duct tape, but there you can see the tops. And I use the copper wire. Oh boy. Try stopping for just a minute, uh, Matt, so that we can, it's getting a little pixelated so we can see the detail. Okay, that's better. So there's kind of the arm and you can see how I hand sew everything kind of into the, into the can itself. That is so intricate. Yeah, it's a difficult process and it's kind of my own origami. Uh, I guess you can say, you know, in it. I don't know if you want me to go around and then you can kind of get the detail in the face. That's incredible. So share a little bit. Are you taking the cans and cutting them and sewing them back together? I mean, how did you even come up with this concept? You know, and this was actually uh, my guitar player down here. He's um, my first piece that I, that I built. And I wanted to do a band with, with, the, with the three. Um, I could just kind of show you a little bit of detail there. And then this one's the drummer. And everything uh, is playable. You know, so, oh my gosh, really? Yeah, so it's a real drum set. And I, I've actually had drummers get on it and, 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 uh, and jam it. That's so and, cool. And really they're all, um, if I can get this up right, they're, they're marionettes. Um, they're all puppets. So he actually slides it off. And um, you can attach his legs, which I have right here. And I could show you. So you really, you've really thought this through because you're creating puppetry, you have sculpture there, you're using, um, you know, items that would normally be thrown away, recyclable items. And then you're marrying those all together to create these characters. Yeah, you know, and that's kind of what I wanted to do because I wanted it to be more of an interactive art piece so that people can touch it, you know, and feel it. You know, I'm, I'm kind of all about the, you know, how you can see the texture of it. And uh, so I wanted to make it playable, you know, and even on the base, you can see I, I put a tuner on there. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I love this. I can tune the, the strings and you put a bow to it and it'll play. And his hands, if you take a look, it's kind of self-balanced, but he's, a, he's also a puppet. And his hand is in the fingers more. And this whole, Thing can come off, and you can actually play it as it comes off. Incredible! Really, I've never seen anybody create anything quite like this. It's hard to do this with the one hand. Yeah, and uh, so you can actually play it, and then it sits on a on a little bottle of the Dos Equis. I love the fact that you chose the Dos Equis too to create these characters because it's very appropriate for what you have. It almost has a little bit of a day of the dead kind of vibe to it also. Yeah. And you know, that's kind of what I was going for also is just to do the, like you said, you know, the day of the dead theme and, and it's the, the Mexican beers, you know, which is uh, the color of the flag. If you notice it's green, white, and red um, with the Dos Equis, the Tecate and the Modelo. You know, and these are very iconic beers, you know, uh, 
beverages here. And then on, on the base that you have there, is that an, an old album that you have sculpted? Yeah, actually, that, I left the album, it's a Doors album, in the back of my car, and it melted that way from the sun. And uh, so I kept it, and he's, he's on that balance. You can kind of see it. I mounted him onto it. That's brilliant. Yeah, and he just kind of gives him enough of a balance. But you're able to walk up to him. He's not too sensitive. And you can kind of give him a good handshake and kind of move him around. That's great. <laughs> so have you? is this your first major piece that you've done? That looks like it's, it takes a long time to create these. And actually, this one, yes. And, you know, this one, I'd have to say, just itself was probably about six months of work. You know, I, 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 I work uh, um, from seven to three. So, and look, there it goes. You see, it's made strong. It's yes, it is. And but very detailed. To do this all with one hand here. And then, actually, this one was the piece that I just recently finished. Okay. And it is the um, the uh, 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 skull with the headdress, and it kind of gives oh. a real New Mexico feel. You can kind of see the zias, and I, I try to litter it with zias, and all the way up. And you can see how it's um, every little detail in it. You can see right here by the eyes. Right. It's all hand sewn with the copper wire. And I love the, the turquoise that you brought in. Yes, and my mother gave that to me. And she told me to incorporate it. She tells me, she gives me so many ideas. You know, and then, then this is uh, the diamondback rattlesnake from Northern That's Texas. my favorite. Yeah, and they're, they're very mysterious and dangerous, you know, uh, uh, creatures. They're, so one of, they're one of our most important, if not the most important, spiritual animals on our reservation is and specifically the red diamond back you know and it goes all the way to the to even the bible you know the serpent mm -hmm. you know and actually these ones um these these rattlesnake skins came from our ranch here uh in anto in um anto chico uh just about 45 minutes south of las vegas and uh we have family events there and uh sometimes the rattlesnakes will come on to the to the property and, and, and we need to kill them just because the kids and, and dogs right. are there. And uh, it's a tradition of mine to always eat them and then take the skin. I try to take every, every piece of it, you know. I've never eaten one, but I hear they taste like chicken. <laughs> They're del it's delicious. If you haven't tried it, the best way, just throw it right on the fire, a little bit of uh, uh, butter with uh, some garlic and it's super tasty. Okay, so, I'll have to try that next time we catch one. We try to we try to leave them alone, but every once in a while they get a little bit too close for comfort. So going back to your artwork, you're creating these. Do you have some ideas about? I mean, are you eventually going to make these available for sale, or do you have any ideas? Because I could see you doing some monument pieces, like some life size. And you know what? Um, that's a tricky question because. You know, with me, it's, it's, uh, watch, I'll flip this. Um, sorry. That's okay. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's uh, kind of like a piece of my heart and soul, you know, so it's, it's hard to put a monetary value on it. And right. uh, it's almost like I don't want to at times, you know, cause I just want to keep it uh, so close to me. And, and uh, so selling it, you know, it's, it's super difficult to me. Um, sure. But, you know, I, I guess at some point I got to start getting rid of some of them. Well, I think, you know, you, it really just depends. I mean, I've worked with artists for many years and just depends on what your vision is. I mean, you certainly are an amazing creative and it would bring people a lot of joy. Um, at, if at some point in your career you say, hey, this is what I want to do full time, then there's that exchange between your ability to create someone paying you for that creation and it brings them joy and you get the monetary value to continue on to buy supplies and to continue to create. So it's just a different, you know, it, it's not that one is better than the other, but I think that 
your work is so amazing. I mean, I'm looking at them thinking, oh my gosh, I'd love to have one of those myself. So <laughs> well, thanks maybe so down much. the road. And, and you know, it's a community-based thing. You know, I have um, a, a lot of my friends, you know, who own businesses here, uh, uh, bars and, and bartenders, you know, they save a lot of cans for me. You know, Estrella Gutierrez is one of them. Um, and she's a bartender at one of the, the local bars here. And she saves me a, a lot of cans. Uh, George right. Moreno, you know, so I have a lot of, of influence there. Uh, Frog, Leroy, you know, who's, who's hooked me up uh, so many times. And it's wonderful to see that everyone wants to get involved in, uh, in recycling on their behalf and, and kind of helping me out as well. Well, and you also are pointing people towards something that's so important for the environment right now, which is recycling. And it always has been, but I think it, you know, so there's many layers to your work, but I would have to say that I've never seen anyone take artwork the way that you do and create this, you know, whole experience because that's really what it is. It's far more than just looking at a sculpture, but you've got interaction there. There's puppetry. I mean, your mind is really, you've got a lot <laughs> going on there. <laughs> well, thank you so much. You know, it's, it's uh, like I said, you know, it was a gift that was kind of given to me, you know, and I, I solely believe that, you know, that, that, uh, that, you know, from, from my, you know, like I was saying, you know, my grandfather, you know, would build these benches and these uh, um, uh, big crosses out of rock, you know, in his old age. And, and you know, uh, it was just, it, just to see that, you know, was a blessing. And, and none of them considered themselves artists. You know, they would just kind of do this as, as, as hobbies. You know, my, my Auntie Doris, my dad's sister, she does these retablos, um, uh, just beautiful, you know, with no art experience. And, uh, and she paints them for the family. You know, it's not oh, to sell. That's so, what a great legacy. Well, you don't always have to have, you know, I always say, I mean, there's many self-taught musicians. There's self-taught artists, chefs. I mean, the creative goes on and on. And if you have that innately within you, you're going to create. I mean, you yeah. just you can't not but do that. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate what you're doing here. Um, so... Tell us where is the best, if people are interested in your work, I know you don't have it for sale yet, which is, I see people on here as a bit of a tease, but we'll wait <laughs> until, you know, we get, we get the, the green light. But um, if somebody wants to follow you and, and follow your work, where's the best place for them to see it? And you know what? I've, I've never been um, a social media type of guy. I, I really don't have... Uh, I have my Facebook, you know, and it was okay. something recent, you know, within the past two years. Um, so I haven't quite gone into the Instagram, you know. Uh, so Facebook, uh, just Matthew Luna, you know, and, and you can check out a lot of just kind of what I do. You know, I, it's not just the art, you know, I, I, uh, I, play, I play a lot of music, too. You know, I come from a musical okay. background and uh, my brother, you know, he's a bass player and uh and self-taught, you know, he's a self-taught bass player and he's just, you know, every time I watch him, he's on fire, you know, and I, and he just, it gives me so much inspiration, you know, to watch him. And, uh, and he's one of my, he's one of my big ones. Well, what a great family you come from. And you're so fortunate to have that close knit family, artists, musicians. It sounds like you guys are really tight and, um, you know, that's so important, especially now. And I think that's, really something that we've learned through this COVID thing is the importance of our family and those relationships. So I appreciate you coming on the show today. We really enjoyed Absolutely. it. I know we've got live stream here. Everybody's going, yay, because your work you know, is really can show you, I can show you a couple of more here. Yeah, let's look at them real quick. Yeah, so I have this, it's our state bird and it's a roadrunner and it's kind of been beaten up by the sun. It's been outside for two years. Uh, now, but you can see it's all pine cones from uh, just from our, you know, just from right outside. And then I used uh, some peacock feathers on the back there. And then you come up to the head and I use the same cans as the, the La Cumbre with the Z. Of course, the color is, is, uh, <laughs> is faded with the sun by now. And then you can see the sewing 
and he goes to the beak. Oh, unbelievable. The, the Zia symbol just right on the front. That's so great. Yeah, and these are the porcupine quills on the top. Boy, that's some imagination you have there. Who would have thought of that? <laughs> and, you know, it's our state bird. So, like, you know, it's very symbolic. I see them, you know, all over the place and, uh, and I love them. And then down here, the same rattlesnake uh, from the ranch. And I was able to capture his head with a little turquoise. Okay. And then it goes down to the, um, to the can tops. Oh, that's and incredible. And the skin is, is, is tan, so it feels like, a, like it's real. It's got a, like a leathery feel to it. That is so amazing, Matt. I love it. And then with his skin, I did these uh, Chuck Taylors. <laughs> so you are multi-talented. <laughs> yeah, and I love the Chuck Taylors, so I decided to make one. With the well, thanks so much for sharing your artwork with us and coming on the show. I really appreciate it. And folks, when you get a chance, go on to Facebook, Matthew Luna. Make sure you friend him so you can see what this incredible artist is going to be bringing to the world of art. I really believe that you're going to be one of those folks that before long, we're going to see you doing this full time because you've got that talent that the world really needs. And um, your creativity is really refreshing because you're taking unusual mediums, you know, you're pulling from your environment and you're creating something that I've never seen anybody uh, with that, the way that you're thinking, I've never seen anybody. And that's what makes art unique is you're one person living on the planet doing something that really nobody else can do the way that you do it. So thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, art community and, and, you know, everyone that supports this, you know, keep recycling and uh, we'll try and clean up this earth, you know, and uh, do some exactly. Well <laughs> said. Okay, my friend, be well and we'll, we'll keep following you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I really sure. appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye. What a nice man and what a inspiration you know just looking around saying what can i use and creating something profound out of it i've never seen anybody use cans that way and the intricacy that he's sewing these things together and the way that he's thinking it's pretty amazing so we're going to do something a little bit different today we have had many many people you know like your folk you folks that are commenting on this platform here ask me if I would be willing to do something on Instagram because it is a different platform and a lot of people actually watch things on Instagram. So I'm gonna sign off today and I am going to go on to another platform which is Instagram, Art of the City TV. So if you're on Instagram, just go there and make sure you like that page. And in about five minutes, I'm gonna to attempt to bring Nana Lopez on live to an Instagram feed. So it's gonna be my first time folks and I'm not the most technically um, proficient person but I'm gonna give it a shot. So if you wouldn't mind joining me, we're just gonna switch platforms. If you don't have Instagram, don't worry, we'll be back here on Friday. We have another great artist lined up Friday, 1 p.m. live streaming. But until then, I'm gonna go jump on Instagram. So I hope you folks join me and um, I'll see you in a few minutes.